After 10 o'clock, thank you for tuning in this, uh, what is it today? Tuesday, Tuesday morning. It's the third day of December, and we have a very, very innovative, cute, imaginative uh, book, or set of books, I should say, to tell you about, and they are Christmas-themed. They are Santa Claus-themed, and I have a little way to introduce this. Veronica Steck is on the phone. She is uh, the creator of a book called Heartfelt Letters from Santa, which is the parent's guide, and then my letters from Santa through the years, which is a, um, kind of a workbook. It, it almost looks well. It is a blank book, actually. It's got lots of blank pages in it, and she'll explain what that's about. But I want—I wanted to start with this. The last night, Rob, I was going through my old photographs from when uh, when the children were little. Uh huh. And specifically when they were little at Christmas time, like when there was a Christmas tree in the photo or oh. something else indicated that it was a Christmas photo, right? Mm-hmm. And I was going to use that, what do you call that slide program I have on my computer so I could put them all together oh, and have okay. them kind of, you know, z- z- <laughs> move around and make a little slideshow and then put mm-hmm. some Christmas. I was just in the mood to do something Christmassy and yeah. nostalgic, you know? Mm-hmm. And then when I was reading the information for the interview that we're about to do with Veronica Stack, I thought, you know, that's really a better idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if you could have something in writing or something, you know, something that really, because when children write, they put really things in there that a, a photo will never capture. A photo will never capture that. Yeah. That the inner thinking, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So let's speak to Veronica right now. She's on the phone. It says here she's an advocate for church and school and uh, an author, obviously. And uh, let's speak to her. Good morning, Veronica Steck. Good morning, Veronica. Thank you for having me, Larry and Robin. Where are you? Where are you calling from? Uh, St. Louis, Missouri. All right. Oh, you got some cold weather coming your way, don't you? Yep, tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we, not to rub it in, but we just noticed we're going to be like mid-70s all, all month long. There you go. Oh, my gosh. Although you probably, you know what, in, in a way, I wish it would get cold here for mm-hmm. Christmas, because I don't know. Because we're both Robin and I are from the north. She's from Wisconsin. I'm from New York. But. Yeah. Oh, so you probably do miss it a little bit. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> but anyway, this is a cute idea. So help us understand. Uh, let's talk about the the book that is written first, of what you're calling the parents' guide. What's in there? Uh, right. Well, this is a two book set, and uh, the name of the the books are Heartfelt Letters from Santa, uh-huh. and included is the parents' guide, which is Heartfelt Letters from Santa, the parents' guide, and it's a it's a book that is basically guides parents on how to write um, letters to their children on behalf of Santa. Um, so um, th- that book kind of explains, like, things that you might want to include in a letter to get the parents' creative juices going, um, you know, things that you would like to point out. You know, basically it is to recap the last year uh, of the child's life in a letter from Santa. Wow, so, what, a, what a great keepsake that would be for the child, right? Well, yeah, that's what we're hoping, and that and that's actually a tradition that we that we have done in our home for years, um, which is where it started. Uh, you know, our children would leave uh, milk and cookies for Santa, and we would have them write a little thank you note. You know, they'd leave it with the milk and cookies, thanks for the presents, um, and to please be careful and give Rudolph a hug. And we, in turn, would would uh, write a letter to each child, kind of, um, you know, just going over the last year with them. Um, you know, praising them for any accomplishments and struggles that they've overcome and um, just good deeds that they had uh, done the last year. And we've always tried to include, like, things that they didn't know that we knew. And sometimes it's good, sometimes Oh, really? Bad. Oh, that's kind of cute. So did, yeah. did you take notes all year long, or did you struggle with, with your husband thinking, what did they do, what did they do? Well, <laughs> He kind of remembers uh, different things than I do, but you know his approach is a little has a little bit more of a sprinkle of sarcasm to it. Where as they have gotten older, by the way, <laughs> not when they were younger, but I mean, we have we have a seventeen, thirteen, and eleven year old. Now. Ah, okay, they, okay. They they love the letters. I mean, they really crack up now. 
But, um, but yes, you know, uh, we've included things like we know who broke the vase, that kind of thing. But mainly oh. <laughs> things that we... Oh, gee. Oh, no. Not, no, 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 not every year. But we really try to list, um, you know, like things that they didn't know that we knew. Like if a parent pulls you aside at school, and, you know, and, or a teacher and says, okay, I have to tell you what your child did today. You know, the things that warm your heart. We oh, really right, would, right. yeah, try to include those. It's kind of... You know, we, we're, we're kind of writing on behalf of Santa, but at the same time, you know, it gives us a platform and an opportunity to point out all the wonderful things about our kids. Well, that's, that's really cute. And, and again, it's, it sounds like you really have to put a lot of thought into it in order for it to be successful. Do, do the child, your children specifically, do they have uh, a keeping place, someplace where all these letters over the years have been kept? Well, we, you know, we started out just on a, sli- on a sheet of paper, and then we saved it, and then I ended up putting together um, this journal and, you know, this sort of thing, and then, that's, and then we, of course, decided to share it. But, yes, so the ones that we had written before, we ended up putting in this guide, I mean, in, in the child's uh, journal, you know, for it to, to be with, with all the ones that were writing in it. But, yes, that's exactly right, because we... You know, my one of my daughters said she goes, "Can you imagine when my kids see this? You know, what kind of you know you know what I was like when I was 13." Yeah, right, right, right. You know, just their interest and just the things that they were doing, things that they they you know found that was important. You know, things that they were involved in. And uh, uh, sometimes parents don't really know all the details of what's going on in their parents' life, but giving them an opportunity to write a letter like that. The uh, um, children might let down their guard a little bit and write something that gives the parent an insight into something that's going on in their life that they need help with. So that's exactly right. And, you know, because as the kids get older, I mean, even though they kind of have, you know, the, the Santa thing figured out, it, it really, you know, they, they still need the encouragement and the love from their biggest fans. And uh, just that... Um, you know, the, the they need to know that their parents are there. They need to know that, um, th- you know, that they're always there to stand by the, their side and to, you know, help them a- as they're growing older and they're exposed to so many different things. Right, right. This, so the the red book, the one that uh, ha- is called My Letters from Santa through the years. So that's a place. I'm I'm a little bit confused. Maybe I ha- misunderstood. I, I thought these were letters from the children, but they are actually letters from the parents, are they then rewritten into the book or are they pasted into the book? How do you work that? No. Well, the, 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 there's two books. One is the Parents' Guide, which, is, uh, it, which helps parents write the letters. The, my letters from Santa through the years, it's the child, it's for the child that the parents write to the children. So, oh, okay. So it's not the uh, children's letters that the children should write in the book. No, these are, par- these are letters that parents write to their children on behalf of Santa, which basically the parents are, uh, you know, writing to the children and, ex- you know, kind of pointing out all the, the, the good things that the children had, have done through the year, any sort of changes, um, you know, the developments, basically, it, you know, way, ways in which they extended kindness and, um, you know, good deeds and they've taken on challenges. It's, it's really a recap of the child's life, the, you know, through the last year. And right, it's, yeah. right. And it's ways for parents to, you know, instill positive characteristics or to even point out when the children have utilized them or manners. And it's a way for parents to just really pour out their heart to their children. Uh, in my notes, it says you're an advocate for church and school. So I want to, I want to tell you two stories. One is from my nephew when he was little, and one is from my son when he was little. I'll tell you my, my nephew first. My nephew asked me once we were ri- we were driving on a fishing trip. And he was just a little boy, and he said, do you believe in Jesus? And I said, you know, I've looked at that story, and it makes sense to me. (laughs) 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 And so that was my way of telling him, yes, you know, and and in a way explaining why I did without getting into anything really theological. Um, My son asked me if I believed in Santa. Now that one, <laughs> I, had to, I had to think better than, than uh, the Jesus question was easier than the, the Santa question. And my answer was, rather than saying yes or no, I said, you know, there must be something because I can spend $500 in December. I don't have that any other month. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere, we get extra money from somewhere. 
Yeah. Sure. Exactly right. So I don't know. I, there's a spirit, I guess, in 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 the broad sense of the word spirit. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And it's and it's a way to yeah to extend, uh, you know, the kindness and so forth with other people and all of that. But yeah, those are tough questions. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we've uh, we've had some of those questions too. Uh, you know, my kids have said, you know, there's no way that you buy us this kind of stuff. So it has to be. <laughs> That's when they were younger. Uh, uh, but, you know, it's funny because, you know, that they're going to ask him for the big stuff because there's no way that you would let them. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. That is funny. So did you and your husband take turns writing each of the letters every year, or did you both sit down to give both of your input and make one letter? How did that work out? Well, we, we just – we – got together basically and uh set, you know we we kept notes during the year which in the parents guide we have a we have little sheets in there so that parents can write down like the big events any accomplishments challenges faced or overcome that the kids have dealt with any positive behavior observed things to improve upon like you know like cleaning your room you know what, clean out your closet every once in a while that kind of thing uh, so what we would do is we would, I just had a sheet, and then basically we put it into the book. But we just got together, and there were things that really stood out in his mind that maybe I had forgotten and so forth and vice versa. So we just really tried to, um, you know, collaborate to to write down what we thought, you know, was very genuine. And we just really wanted to point out to our kids that, you know, that we see what they're doing, that how they're developing um, and, you know, in, into, you know, very responsible people. And, you know, and it's, it's stuff that basically that their kids, that they can share with their kids and their grandkids. Yeah, yeah. Do you reference the toys or the gifts that, that are being left that year? Uh, n- we've not done that. No, because I, I mean, oh. cause I, was, I would love for the... K- for the children to remember what <laughs> yeah remember the year i got you the, the big thing oh, <laughs> I, I, yes we, we have done that we've said like um how come you don't play with whatever anymore <laughs> you, you know yeah, right right you know, well i mean that's kind of like the funnier part of how it how come you, you cut know, the we'll, hair off the bar, barbie doll right <laughs> i did that right. <laughs> it's gone um, my brother did that uh, did did your children share these letters with their friends, did, do you think they actually had a conversation about that, that they received these letters from Santa and then the friends would pose that question to their parents? Um, I don't uh, I don't know if they did. I had That hadn't come up, but we read it, you know, they'll, they'll read it out loud uh, to the rest of the family on Christmas morning. They'll read it oh. so that they'll, and so it's really neat because they really, I mean, they get really, you know, they're older now. I mean, they're 11, 13, right. 17. They get teary-eyed, and they see, I mean, you know, we really pour right. out yeah. all the things that we're proud of them uh, sounds, about. Sounds like we, you have a loving family is what it sounds like to me. Well, yeah, th- thank you, and we do, and we really try to encourage our kids. And we know that they're, we all are, you know, a work <laughs> in progress, and we really want, to, you know, to to notate when they're doing something right and they're really trying and they're putting others before themselves and that sort of thing. You know, we do list the things that make us less than jolly or Santa less than jolly. We'll list those things. But, I mean, they're very fun-loving and they're very light. Wow. wow. Uh, but, you know, we really try to, we try to emphasize counting your blessings. And it's not about the presence. It's about the family. It's about, you know, appreciating what you have. And um, just the, the any of the positive characteristics that, that they've taken on or uh, virtues that we've seen in them. Veronica Steck is our guest, and uh, we're speaking about two of her books, and they, they are companion pieces with each other. You'll understand when you see them, and or perhaps you already do by listening to us. Heartfelt Letters from Santa, The Parent's Guide, and My Letters from Santa Through the Years, which is basically a blank book. We do this show live, Veronica, and that means our listeners often will call in, so let's take a call, okay? That sounds great. Good morning. You're on the air with Veronica Steck. Uh, good morning. Uh, Veronica, I just wanted to add, uh, do the parents, uh, I mean, uh, in the book, or not in the book, do the parents uh, ask the children to help, um, like, going to the shelters? And, and feed um, um, going in the whole, on the oh, for, line for the needy to, to help to feed. Okay. Um, 
of these uh, uh, elder rates. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Veronica? Yes, we, yes, and that's the thing is this because this is so, this is designed to uh, add anything that you want to, we definitely, in our book and with our children, we do a lot of that sort of thing. And, and we emphasize that it's good to serve and it's, it's good to be humble and to help others. So for us as a family, we do several things like that. And so parents that want to introduce that or parents that do that as a family, definitely it's something that, you know, that we would love for the kids to know that, you know, there is a world outside of themselves and not being served, but to serve others. Yeah, yeah. That's a good question. And that, that's a great answer as well. I, I think um, that that is a huge part of what we're trying to teach. You know, I've often thought about the whole Santa Claus thing mm-hmm. in, in that we give gifts without wanting any glory for ourselves for being the giver. Yeah, and that's why this 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 exterior person that comes in and brings the gift so that it doesn't sh- make us look like he- heroes. You know, it's somebody else's. It's just giving without. I don't know. There's something to that that's that's kind of maybe overlooked with the whole Santa Claus story. What do you think? I, I think so. I think it's. I don't think that uh, you know. It's about the recognition uh, of giving. Um, that you know, you do it to do. You 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 do it to help other people. It's not or to give without, you know, receiving anything in return. Yeah. I wonder how many parents have, an, like, a gift from the parents and then gifts from Santa, just so the kids don't think that they were forgotten by the parents. <laughs> I, I always oh, yeah. did that. I always said this is from Santa and this is from Mom and Dad. I, <laughs> I always did that. There was always an equal thing there. <laughs> that's a, that's yeah. a great idea because that's good for them not to feel like, okay, uh, y'all got off easy this year. Um <laughs> Because Santa brought me everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we've kind of thought of this tradition as um, a history of our love, you know, to our children through these letters. Because we really wanted them to have something, you know, later on. I mean, you know, the, the short-term benefit is that they get this little letter and it's in front of them and they see all the neat things that we thought about them and, you know, what they have done. But then, you know, later on, they really get to see... And they really appreciate as they grow older that we were always, you know, by their side and we were always trying to motivate them and instill these these characteristics that help them succeed and become better people and better parents and, you know, when they go off into the world and all of that. How old are your children? You you look um, beautiful. How old are you? Wait, look at the picture. I know, I know. She's... How old are your children? look like she can have a 17-year-old. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you don't. I'm very, I'm very old. Um, I You're have very a, old. I am. Yes, yeah, we're not even going to tell you how old. But I'm, uh, let's see, I have a 17, 13, and... Um, 11-year-old. Well, you look beautiful. And we do another, oh, you're so sweet. We have another phone call. <laughs> you look good in purple, too. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. I think the author's um, idea of, of putting this together is just so wonderful. And, um, you know, it's, it's actually something anyone could do um, and, and keep it through the years. And just something so special that um, the son or daughter will have later on and then even to share if they do have their own children and like pass it on as, a, as an heirloom and take it out every ho- you know Christmas or holiday season or Hanukkah season or but in I, I started to think through the years that you know that the, the Christmas uh, thing that goes on uh, and Santa Claus and the anticipation and joy that children feel and just being so excited and in awe and then to hold that feeling later on in life um, to use to do for others and the unexpectedness of things and and when you do things of kindness later on in life and you can remember back to how did I feel on Christmas morning what did that feel like and then so that when I go out and later on in my life and can do things for other people, especially unexpected, what that must make the other person feel. So mm-hmm. to hold that feeling of, you know, well, if the roles were reversed, how would you feel? And to think back how you felt as a child and, and use that later on in life. So, and, and you know, you, and you bring all those things up. And the last caller also touched upon that, too. Um, to, to work that in, but that's how I've kind of, you know, thought 
through the years, you know, developing that idea of Santa Claus and Christmas and all that. So I thank the author so much, and I will definitely look for what she's put together. Thank you. All right, thank well, you. Well, thank you very much. And, and, you know, I think, too, because your children will have the the books in hand, they'll always remember, you know, how your grandparents or your mother or whoever, you know, somebody very dear to you would always remind you, you know, whether it's your manners or to do something for someone else, you know, you really see as an adult that they really stuck with it, trying to help you appreciate what you have and how to, how you can make a difference. And, you know, I just remember things that my grandmother taught me, and, you know, she's no longer here, and it's stuff that, of course, you want to pass on to your kids and to your grandkids. And I think it's just really, it's really a, a way to see, you know, when, when you grow up and you see who you've become and you look back, and it's because of all the reminders and all the support that you got from your, you know, your parents and right, your grandparents. Right. Yeah, no, it's a wonderful idea. When, uh, we, when we order the book, do, they, do the two books come together? Uh, yes, um, oh, okay. it's a two book set. Well, you and and it's it's heartfelt letters from Santa to you. So you get the the uh, parents' guide, and then you you get one child's book. But you can order. You know, you really, to be honest, you only need one parents' guide. So if you have three children, you would order one set, and then you could get the additional. Oh, journal. I see. But you really, you really want each child to have it because it's stuff that they're going to hand out to their kids and to their. Grand, you know, their grandkids will eventually get it. It, it, it. You want it to be. It's between the parent and the child. So, I would, I would probably say that instead of writing one letter to all three children, or it being in one book, it's, it's like handing, you're, you're handing down a legacy of your love for that particular child. And this ju- just doesn't cement that Christmas is the season of giving because sometimes people think, well, this is the season of giving. They're going to give now during Christmas and then the other 11 months out of the year, they don't give anything. But this is something that people need to that that you're making people aware of that a person has to give every day of their life, not no, just that's at exactly Christmas. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what we want for our kids. You know, we want them to, I mean, uh, you know, you want them to grow up and to be able to take care of themselves, to be self-sufficient, but you want them to be aware of the world that they live in, and you want them to, you know, be kind and honest and to think outside of themselves. I mean, I, you know, I want that more than I want the success for my kids. I want them to be aware. I want them to notice the world around them and notice someone in need and notice, you know, that life isn't always, you know, just you know, butterflies and rainbows, and they need to be aware, and they have to do their part. And that's, you know, that's our job as parents is to do all of that, is to help them grow and to be those people. And we really, it's, it's, it's such a daily thing, and that's what I think is so neat is, is, is just that, you know, we remember where we, where we received our values, where we got them, and the, and the people that stuck with us when we were growing up and how they, you know, they kept encouraging us. And that's, you know, this is a written form of that, um, you know, and, and I think that this gift will stand out the most. You know, when, when, when we grow up, I mean, I remember a couple of things that I really, really wanted as a child that I received, you know, a doll or something. But if I would have gotten a book of letters, uh, you know, that my parents had put the time in every year, you know, that's what stands out. It's not the whatever. It's a great, it really great idea. Uh, I actually have a copy of each of the two books. So we'll give that away as a set to one person. If you call and ask for it, you can have the set that Veronica sent us. And the rest of us have to go buy it. Do you want to give us a website or other information on how to get the books? Yes, um, it's you could go to our website, which is www heartfelt uh, one word heartfelt letters from Santa. Okay, heartfelt letters from Santa. Is it to you on there also? Uh-huh. And, and it, and, right, and it could be. It could, we have it could go in either way, and I kind of give the shorter. We it it funnels into the same thing, so it's heartfelt okay. letters from Santa, either to you or heartfelt letters from Santa. It goes, takes you to the right place. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Anyway. Good, good idea. You, you you did all your homework on the the whole domain thing, right? When you put, uh-huh. putting your right. website together. Well, Veronica, have a great Christmas. Thank you for making okay, ours a lot better. I I, th- I think this is a wonderful idea, and your family tradition will become an American tradition. Well, I'm hoping so, and I'd love to send y'all a couple more copies uh, of the hard, you know, so that maybe you can offer it, you know, with a giveaway or whatever for well, your uh, If audience. you do, we will. We, we'll give them away for sure. Okay, well, great. Well, um, should I, and I'll just 
touch base in just a minute and to get that uh, address. You, sure, we can do that off the air, okay? Okay, that um, sounds great. Thank you for having me, and okay. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Veronica. So don't go away, and uh, we'll take a little break, and we'll be right back. And thank you so much, Veronica. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you Are you wasting hundreds me. or thousands of dollars on termite retreat fees? If you're not with Turner Pest Control, you probably are. Turner Pest Control offers the industry's only termite and pest control package that never charges retreat fees, ever. You can get started today for only $99. This is a value of $500 or more. This includes treatments, installation of monitoring stations, quarterly pest control, and a lifetime guarantee, all for an unbelievable low $99. Even if you have another pest control provider, visit turnerpest.com to find out how you can avoid paying those high termite retreat fees. Experience Christmas at Gaylord Palms, November 23rd through January 5th with Ice featuring Frosty the Snowman. Join Frosty, everyone's favorite snowman, in a colorfully frozen retelling of this original Christmas classic. Relive your favorite scenes, hand-carved in more than 2 million pounds of ice sculptures and slides, plus the all-new Artisans in Action Live Ice Carving Zone and the awe-inspiring Nativity in Ice. For tickets and packages, visit Christmas at GaylordPalms.com. This is a public notice. Local residents can now save thousands of dollars on their next car, truck, or SUV. It's not a tent sale. Because no tent is big enough to hold this many cars. It's OcalaForSale.com. Say goodbye to sticker shock. OcalaForSale.com has thousands of vehicles with no stickers at all. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSale.com. Prices and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer upcharge. Undercutting less proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. Don't get caught without your daily source of senior deals. Pick up your copy of the Senior Voice newspaper. It's your source for schedule and events tailored to seniors with information you need, like a list of free events in the area. We even have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company to you that fits your needs. And all we ask in return is that you tell them where you heard about them. For more information, call Tom's Picks, 352-804-1223. And pick up your copy of the Senior's Voice at most any business up and down the 200 corridor. Now read Ocala downtown newspaper online. What's better than 12 days of Christmas? 12 days of presents, that's what. So that's exactly what we're going to give you. Tune in every day between now and December 2nd for your chance to call in and get your name in the Christmas Bowl. Then on December 2nd, we'll draw a name on air during Fun with Joe at 1145. The lucky listener will have 12 minutes to call in and claim that prize. If not, it rolls over the next day and some other lucky listener can win your prizes. We're doing it for 12 days so you could win it all. Prizes like a wine basket from Island Grove Winery or Skagen watches from Art Meadows Jewelers. Who wouldn't love $150 off your power bill from the City of Ocala Utility Services? Or how about a $600 Reactor Men's Watch from Gem Galleria? Or maybe a large camellia or beautiful dogwood tree delivered and installed from Bob Wine's Camellia Gardens. Remember, listen for your chance to get your name in the Christmas Bowl, then listen every day at 11.45 when your name could be called. Call us back within 12 minutes and it's yours, but miss it and it's coal in your stockings. So tune in, call in, and win on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Legally Yours, brought to you by Fuller & Fuller Attorneys at Law. On the air every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. with John Fuller, a board-certified civil trial lawyer for over 25 years. John welcomes your questions from business to complex family matters to legal disputes. So tune in every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. for Legally Yours with John Fuller, right here on WOCA 1370 a.m. and 96.3 FM, The Source. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing. Our tractor services include bush hog, disking, front end loader, box blade, and stump grinding. We also have zero turn mowers for the smaller paddocks, aisleways, fence rows, and lawn care. Fence row spraying is also available for weed control. We are licensed and insured. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440 or online at powellgene, G-E-N-E, at yahoo.com. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County is a ministry dedicated to improving lives by providing affordable and decent housing. Help them help others by visiting the Habitat for Humanity Ocala Home Store on Northwest 27th Avenue. To schedule a donation, give them a call and they'll come and pick it up. For more information, visit HabitatOcala.org. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County. Building homes, building hope, building community. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. 
you know you can add blueberries to lean ground beef or turkey? The fruit will keep the meat moist, plus you'll sneak more nutrients right into your meals. Did you know all the gadgets we use are now affecting our posture? Technology is turning us into a nation of hunchbacks. To stop the slouching, frequent breaks from our gadgets and hold our heads up. The pathway to success. Support other people's ideas, speak up more often, and always be a good teacher. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. You've got a garden and we've got a show for you called You've Got a Garden with your host, Master Gardener, Carol Ann Baldwin. Carol Ann answers your questions about your flowers, your veggies, your grass, your trees, even questions about your bugs. And she's only on WOCA, so don't miss Carol Ann Baldwin and You've Got a Garden each Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. right here on WOCA The Source. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Five minutes before 11 o'clock, a little bit wet out there this Tuesday, and it is promising to get wetter later on today, and then colder sometime tonight, tomorrow, whenever. Joe Reichel is here to tell you what he does when people have things that have been damaged, especially things in their homes. Sometimes it is from water or fire or trees falling down, and why did the music end all of a sudden? Uh, Joe Reichel is here from Damage Control Services, and the show is an open phone show, so if you have a call, a, I mean a call, a question, and you, or a comment if you want to call the number is the WOCA climate control source hotline 6229622 good morning joe good morning and we passed each other you passed us yesterday on the on that Osceola Boulevard bridge Osceola Boulevard yeah <laughs> it's easy to spot your car Cause it is. Cause it's all wrapped up with the damage control. I stuff. get asked all the time how many of uh, how many of those cars do we have because people see them everywhere so I, I typically will say we have quite a few of them. You know, sometimes I say six or ten. And the truth is? One. One, really? So yeah. you're just out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm the only one. <laughs> so So what told you that my car was my car? Um, I, I recognize the... Like uh, the big head in the driver's seat? No. The, well, first I recognize <laughs> the, the website that you have on the, oh, right. the back. Oh, right. Yeah, the Teaching it, is it? Picture adults yeah. learning to read, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's our way to support what Karen does over at the Literacy at Council. At the Literacy Council, which, yeah, I'm involved there, too. So I was, it was kind of funny. The first time I saw your car, I, was, I took a picture of it, and I sent it to... Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I sent it to um, Karen, and I was like, look at this. And she goes, yeah, that's Larry's car. <laughs> so, Yeah, yeah. Well, I put it on there, and it just does never come off. I thought the, rain, the first rain, I thought for sure would wash it off, but it never did. That's pretty cool. So stays, I hope I didn't put the wrong stuff on there. <laughs> <laughs> Use paint. <laughs> you know, I had a note on my door when I got home yesterday that said that the... Wow, look at those cute children up there. The, the uh, note said that the water in my community was going to be turned off sometime today. Right. So that when I get home later on, there might not be any water. So they have a huge leak, apparently, in the community somewhere underground. Oh, they wow. Have, that they've got to fix. And I mean, you could imagine that if that ever got out of control, you'd have... <laughs> damage everywhere yeah that'd be terrible yeah we got a call yesterday from a uh um a, a frantic female with a flood that's the, <laughs> the three f's that's a good referral for right, us a, right, a right. frantic female with a flood or a frantic female with a fire uh, yesterday we had a, a lady call yesterday morning older lady in Ellen, and uh, she had water everywhere and hmm. and uh, had to go out and uh, take out the carpets and and um, dry the place out and set up all the equipment for her, so. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, it was a, a pretty big one. So that's that's one of the benefits of driving all around all over the place with a wrapped car advertising the business. Yeah, we've got a, um, a truck that has all of our information on it and a, a box truck that looks very similar to my car, has the three of us on it. So the same oh, okay. picture that's on the magnets, actually. Okay, okay. Yeah. And the magnets are a hit, aren't they? They are. Yeah. A lot of people like the magnets. And uh, you, everybody should get a magnet. Put. I have two on my refrigerator. I, I always think I'll give one to somebody if I ever can find somebody who needs to have a magnet. Somebody <laughs> says, hey, what's that? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's Joe. 
That's Joe. Joe and Mike and Rob, I should say. <laughs> the, the three of you. Yeah. So we, so we're coming into that time of year, and do you take a break now? Do you, do you, do you, will you take a phone call if you're in the middle of your turkey dinner, and all of a sudden there's that frantic female? We are a 24-hour um, emergency type of business. So if... You know, and, and that's, you know, a lot of, t- one thing about Thanksgiving Day, for example, um, there are more fires on Thanksgiving Day than any other day of the year. Really? Really. Why is that? Um, <clears throat> a lot more people doing, you know, cooking inside. The um, deep fried turkey phenomenon? A lot of uh, deep frying of turkeys. So if you're going to be doing that, make sure you're not close to the house. Have you ever sure had that? A deep fried turkey? Yeah. Yes. I don't think I have. It's it's pretty good. Yeah. But um, it can be dangerous. So you know, if you're if you're planning on doing that, make sure you have a a fire extinguisher handy, and you're not close to the home. Uh, a lot of times, people do that. You know, they're either too close to the home or um, you know not not prepared. So. Did you ever have to repair something that was intentionally designed to look old? There's a couple of examples I can think of. Down in the villages, they created like these new things that look like they've been around for maybe 100 years or so. The old buildings? Yeah. Yes. So have you ever had that where you've got to fix it, but when you fix it, it's got to continue looking old? Um, we have, we've done some... Um well, we've, we've matched and, and repaired some things, so kind of yes. Um, so is it, does it take? Because we couldn't couldn't necessarily make it. Is it a different brand new when we right? Is it a different approach? You have to use artistic <clears throat> skills or something, or? Well, yes. Um, pretty much any time you do, you know, fixing of something, there's there's an artistic skill. Right. Um, well, yeah. I, I didn't mean, mean, if you're implied that there wasn't. Well, I mean, you're trying to patch some drywall, for example, and and you've got to match it. You've got to make it make it look good. So. Um, I mean, a lot of times you can see where a, a drywall patch has been made, so you have to, to fix it just right. Or a lot of times, you know, wood trim, if you're replacing it, you got to, you know, make sure that the stain matches or, you know, whatever. So, you know, pretty much any time you do a, and is that a easier, repair job. Is that easier nowadays because of technology? <clears throat> and For example, I know if I want paint to match... All you got to do is bring in a, a little piece of it and they'll be able to match it perfectly. That is that is a, a very, you know, easy to do um, as far as that. But a lot of times, too, you know, after paint's been, you know, on the on the wall for a while and the sun is, you know, in sun and the weather and, and whatnot, it will fade or it will, you know, start to, you know, change color slightly. So once you put new paint on there, you've got to paint a larger area or you know and it, so it won't be as visible as just a patch so i mean we've got one right now <clears throat> we're replacing some wood beams in a doctor's office and they're decorative they're just over the entryway um kind of like a, a trail an open trellis type thing and the beams have rotted out so we're replacing them with a metal beam no, oh, well. um, it's going to look exactly like the wood, but it's going to be aluminum. Uh-huh. And um, you know, we're painting it all to match you know the existing. So you know, it's we're changing materials completely so that they'll never have a problem with rot. You know, in the future, but you know, having to make it match the existing and and fit into the the existing look of the building. Uh, the phone number right now is 622-9622. If you have a question for Joe, it can be a do-it-yourself question. Some of you out there are thinking, you know, I can fix that myself. And maybe you can pick Joe's brain a little bit and get some ideas. Yeah, you mentioned, Larry, about the uh, the weather getting colder. And, and we've got these uh, storms coming through the, the northern parts of the country right now. And kind of earlier than tip, earlier than normal. And, you know, that's one thing down here. We don't really worry about winterizing as much as we probably should, mm-hmm. but um, I mean we can get cold cold snaps here where you want to make sure that you cover up your uh, well if it's outside or oh, right, or right. you know your spigots that are on the outside of the house anything like that you want to make sure that you protect these from the weather so that you know you don't have broken pipes or you know they don't freeze. 
uh, making sure that your fireplace is, um, if you have a fireplace, make sure that the, the, you know, the chimney is clear of debris. Sometimes animals or birds will build nests in there. Right, right. Does does the smoke ever back up in into the house because of that? Well, we've I don't know if it's because of that, but we've had several jobs where that has happened, and homeowners you know will call us out and you know they'll have smoke. You know the the they just don't or, realize it, right? Right. Well, once it starts it's happening, tough. it's hard to. I mean, you can't really stop it. So that's true. Yeah. What do you do? Well, you got to either get the get fire out sweep. or do do you, uh, do we have chimney sweeps in our community? Like. <sighs> Like from, uh, what was that movie? Mary Poppins? Mary Poppins. Yeah, <laughs> Chim Chimney. <laughs> I, mean, do, I mean, do we actually have um, people who do that? I'm sure we do. I don't know of anyone, and I really need to look into that, or maybe a, a listener right now would know of someone that does that, because I get asked that quite often, you know, as far as if I know someone that does that. And and have you bu- rebuilt a chimney? Is that something you've ever had to uh, repair? Well, we've we're working on a on a chimney right now i think we're we're almost done with it but one of our current jobs was a a, a wood-sided chimney that we're replacing you know there was a lot of wood rot and then the flashing was causing a leak down into the house um the old flashing just got the metal flashing oh is this uh, the house with, with the two pieces the the, the roof kind of came together okay. yes you showed me there was uh, some leaves trapped in there um that's a different one okay okay but um yeah the so we do a lot of work on chimneys actually um sometimes chimneys will be separating you know brick chimney will be separating or block chimney will be separating from the house or um the cracks in the stone have allowed moisture to get in something like that so it, you know there's you know, just typical maintenance like the rest of a house that needs yeah. done. Yeah, this is the, the tonight. Uh, there's like a ninety percent chance of rain and uh, wind, so tonight might be one of those nights. Let's uh, let's hope that you have a if you have a tree near your house, it stays where it should be. Yes, and that's. I mean, it's windy out there right now. So you know, when we get rain like we've got right now, the the rain loosens up the soil, and then the wind will will blow those trees over. So you know, definitely keep an eye on on the the surroundings for sure so as as does the cold weather um did i ever ask you about the the non-buckling concrete or no um i don't think so no where where you don't need that you know those little those little cracks or those little uh, lines right i guess they've developed a concrete that won't need that in the future or really yeah so it won't expand and, and contract or whatever so it won't be cracking they don't need the expansion joints is what they call them is that what they're called mm-hmm. so i mean i don't know i would see we're so used to a certain way it's hard to imagine doing anything different that would be cool um I, you know a lot of times like for example a, a a house that I was at, we did a job um, a couple weeks ago. They have a, a large oak tree in, next to the driveway, and it has heaved the concrete and, and broke oh, it really? yeah. around that tree. And, and we've, well, actually, we've got two jobs right now that are like that. So, um, the, that was my phone going <laughs> Oh, <off>. okay. <laughs> the uh, office line is forwarded to me, so all phone calls come to my, oh, okay. Come okay. to my phone. But um, a lot of times that, you know, that concrete will break. So I'd, I would be, you know, it won't break up a large area because of that expansion joint. It'll only stay in that area. So I would be curious to see what oh, would happen in something. sometimes the expansion joint might actually serve more than one purpose. Right. Huh. Only a certain area gets, you know, damaged or destroyed. And it's easier to fix that area, too, because you just have to take one spot out. Right, right. So I would be curious what would happen with a... a a slab like that that wouldn't have expansion joints do you, for do like you, a driveway or something like that or sidewalk. Now some people paint their driveways. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? Do you like that idea, or do you, is it a better way of doing that? If you wanted to color your driveway for one reason or another. Well, I mean, there's all kinds of uh, epoxies that you can put on them, um, you know, or stains that can be put on. I know several people that do it. I think it's a beautiful thing. Um, it, it creates a, a very nice look. Really? So I do. Um, it flattens it out a little bit. So it looks like it's less porous when they do that. Um, yeah, because the uh, well, if, if you're painting it, that'll fill up the fill in the little nooks and crannies. Yeah, fill all those cracks S- and crevices. Steal a word from the uh, Thomas's English muffins people. Oh, there you go, nooks <laughs> and crannies. <laughs> that's, that's where I got it from, anyway. Nice. 
Yeah, and well, well, actually, when oil when oil gets onto uh, from a car onto the driveway, that's often a problem. And I, I guess if it's painted, it won't be as bad of a problem. Am I right? Is it easier to clean? Well, you'd be able to, yeah, clean up. Clean up uh, would be easier. Uh, when when uh, penetrate the concrete. So when when somebody has damage and 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 the solution is going to involve insurance companies getting involved, is it harder this time of year when the, when the insurance agent might be out on a break or whatever? Well, um, I mean, I don't know that it's any harder this time of the year. And and most of the time, people as general construction uh, projects, people are winding them down because they don't want to have construction going on in their house. So. Um, your insurance, you know, company is wanting to take care of the problem no matter what. So, I mean, they're going to have someone working to take care of the claim. And you do have another phone call or a first phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Joe Rankle. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Joe. Good morning. You see, uh, with a natural uh, gas burning fireplace, you know, gas burns fairly clean. Uh, would there be any chance of, uh, of getting a chimney that could get some kind of a, uh, a material on it that would be dangerous, that should be cleaned off, or should not uh, one worry about uh, a natural uh, gas burning fireplace? Um, I really don't know too much about natural gas, so I couldn't answer that yeah. question. Um, I wouldn't be able to give you a good answer for it anyway. Um, natural gas is a, a cleaner burning fuel, and, and typically I know they just need to be vented, not necessarily yeah. um, you know, an actual fireplace, so, or you know, or like not necessarily an actual chimney. Yeah, I, I know. I just talked to my brother-in-law here last week. Uh, he lives up north, and they just bought a, a new home here this fall, and uh, they've got a uh, a large fireplace that's natural gas burning. And uh, he was told by the uh, the the people that owned the home before they bought it that uh, they used it very extensively in the winter time, and that there was no need to really ever have the <clears> chimney <throat> cleaned. But you know, so he's asking me, right. I've got a gas fireplace, and I said I really don't know the. I talk. I'm going to call a guy in a radio program here during the week and see what he has to say about it but uh, I, I don't know you think maybe over several years you might get a build up of something in there I, I don't know it's uh, 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 it'd be, it'd be something to look into I would imagine yeah I'm I'm I think anybody that would work around natural gas would be able to answer that question yeah, um, yeah. I, I've never heard of a, a fire, a chimney fire uh, in a natural gas fireplace, but, uh, you know, there's always a first for something. Of course, like you pointed out before, you know, you can have, like, bird stuff up there and, right. and the other other things that could ha- cause a problem. But uh, as far as getting the uh, residue from gas, natural gas, I don't know. It's, uh, I'll have to check it out and see what the other people have to say about it. Yeah, I'm not sure too much about that. But okay, definitely well, as far as, you know, anything, you know, like animals or, or birds yeah. making... But a lot of times squirrels, birds will make a nest in there. The so, <laughs> what's that? I said squirrels like to go in the chimneys too. If you don't have a cap on them, yes, they do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, thanks a lot. Thank you for the call. The uh, number, if you would also like to call, is six two two W O C A six two two nine six two two. At the end of the show, we'll give uh, the phone number so you can call Damage Control Services and actually get something fixed. But right now, if you have a question, go ahead and call us on the air. Joe Reichel will answer your question. And again, I I'd invite you, even if it's a do-it-yourself project you're doing, it's good to share, share your knowledge a little bit. Yeah, right. Uh, that's. We we do a lot of that as far as helping people with different things that they might need done, and you know it seems to always come around that whenever they do have something uh, larger, they will call and and get help. So the one, the one thing I think would probably be really important is to have the right tools, and that, that is, and that might be the big expense that makes them say, you know what, I think I'll just call Joe. Well, that's a lot of times people don't have the the right tools, or they just don't feel comfortable enough using them. Right, right, and that's where. Right. You know, I, I I used to, uh, you know, personal story, I, I used to be very, uh, very afraid of uh, circular saws. I mean, just growing up around, watching my dad cut stuff right, and, right. you know, hearing stories of people losing their fingers right, and, right, right. Um, you know, going through um, shop class in school and whatnot and, you know, just the safety of that. And But it wasn't until, you know, in our, you know, in a, having our construction company and, and using it every day pretty much that I got to where I felt very comfortable with it and and can cut just about anything and feel okay doing it. Do you still? I mean, do you still do it every day? Uh, I don't. Okay. My job is the sales and marketing, but, I mean, I, I 
carry my tools in the car in case I do need to. So how do you put a go. hole, like for a toilet or something? I, I don't know. In into the wood. I mean, in a wood floor. Yeah. Like how do you do that? Well, I mean, how do you know where to put it? I mean, if it's well, I mean, you, <laughs> you the wood wouldn't be on the floor yet, would it? Um, not typically, unless you're doing a remodeling project or something, some yeah. sort like that. And then it's just a matter of figuring out, laying out where it would fit. Because uh-huh. um, I'm not sure the exact measurements, but it has to be so far off of each wall and and away from everything, so that the tank and everything will fit. Um, so once you know that number, it's just a matter of drawing out what size. You know the pipe. Mm-hmm. What size the pipe will be, which is typically a four-inch hole. So what do you what do you do? Drill, uh, drill first, and then put a, like a saber saw in there. Or well, you could you could do that, or you could take a um, like a circular saw and and start a cut, and then use a, a jigsaw and and cut around it. Oh, okay. um, or they do have four-inch hole saws that you could just make. You know, put one in a drill. Oh wow! And <laughs> like the holes they put in this granite table. Yep. That's what they use. But what that would be a what a one inch maybe? Uh probably a one inch hole for these. Something no, one. No, it's a uh at least a two. Two inch hole? Yep. Yeah, I watched them do that. And they had a vacuum cleaner mm-hmm. right up against it because of all the dust. All the dust. Yeah. yeah. I can't can you I mean, have you worked? Have you drilled granite? I mean it mm-hmm. seems like it would crack. I'd be so worried. Uh, I've done a little bit of drilling on granite, um, but more like with tile and and uh, like cultured marble, things like that. So, you know, our last guest was one of the recipients of one of the uh, ABC home makeover things with the move the bus, you know, that guy. Okay. Yeah, our last guest had that. And, and we know a guy up in Gainesville that had this done. He was a, he's a drummer. He's got a, a house that I guess ABC, whoever pays for that, I don't know. Very uh, nice. But isn't, isn't that kind of, I guess, it's an amazing thing to see somebody's life transformed or right. their home transformed. But you see it all the time, really. Well, and that's you, you just don't have a million people helping you. <laughs> no, not typically. You know, and that's one thing. When we go into a project, we can see, you know, what it's going to look like. A lot of times, you know, the finished project and and what you know kind of can visualize it. I have a meeting today with a, a doctor's office, and we're going to be. Um, you know, basically giving them color choices, a, a different varieties of colors that they could possibly go with uh, for this remodel project. Mm-hmm. Um, everything from granite top to what the cabinets will, the color of the cabinets and the the uh, part of it will be a formica top. So uh, pretty much I'll take some samples in there and show them what everything will, you know, what, what it'll go like or what it will possibly look like. And, you know, Pretty much, that's where they get all excited, and you know, they start. They can start to picture it then. Right. You know, when I was younger, I um, bought a house, and I bought it before it was done, and I had the luxury. I guess everybody doesn't have this of being able to pick out my own lights. Right. And the uh, the uh, construction guy, he told me, "Go, go, 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 find some lights and tell us what which ones you want. We'll put them in for you." So it was so fun. I guess you like that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I was married at the time. My wife and I went into this shop somewhere here in Ocala, just full of lights. Right. Not aware of how much these things cost. You know, you can go cheap, too. You can go expensive. Right. And it's it's kind of an amazing thing. Like, for example, the lights in here. Lights make a big difference. Mm-hmm. So if something has been damaged to the point where you're basically rebuilding it, do you say, do you want to keep the, the lights you had or do you want new lights? How do you... Well, um, you know, pretty much if it's insurance related damage, insurance will pay for replacement of what you had. Uh-huh. So if you've got fluorescent lights in a room, for example, they're going to pay to have fluorescent lights put back in there. Um, however, if you wanted to upgrade or you wanted to put in, you know, some nicer lights or can lights uh, or a chandelier or whatever you wanted I mean that can be done and that's the time to do it make a decision and you know go with changing something out yeah, somebody was telling me they built a chandelier from a kit I guess you buy a kit well that would be cool you either you either put it get it put together or you get it not put together and I guess you save money if you put it together yourself I'm sure I can't remember who it was that would be a that would be a serious project having to, <laughs> to do all that especially if it's all crystal right yeah well, we've put, you know, different homes that we've built and whatnot. We've put, you know, fan and well, lights together. Well, there's another thing. I mean, you need to be able to know that you're hanging it from a, 
a strong part of the of right. The ceiling, right? Well, and that's you know depending on what light you use, or if you use a if you are putting a fan in, there's different mounting brackets for stuff like that. So you have to make sure that you put it all together right and make sure that it's done, um, you know, the way it needs to do in order to make sure that it's sturdy. Uh, so any, any plans for this weekend? Anything special? Uh, I leave uh, Thursday morning. I'll be going to Pennsylvania. Oh, that's right. You're, you're heading up there. Is there snow yep, there right so, now? Um, not, well, possibly right now. Um, up northern Pennsylvania, where my, my family is originally from. Right near the lake. Um, just off Lake, lake, uh, lake Erie, uh, about 45 minutes south of that. They've got... Uh, uh, 18 inches my cousin does oh wow yeah see now I, I remember where the location is because you were there once before and I looked you up on because you did the show from yep, up there remember I, that? I did the show from up there <laughs> so I'll be going I'll be just outside about an hour east of Pittsburgh this time with uh, going to my family and that's uh, Indiana Pennsylvania oh that's kind of cool yep that's kind of cool. Well, you be careful going up there. Stay warm. And, and uh, before we say goodbye, what is your phone number? Somebody will be there to answer the phone, right? Yep. My phone number is 352-817-6574. Or you can get the office, 352-622-5135. Or you can always email me, joe, at damageflorida.com. All right. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Larry. Have a great Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! ABC News Now. I'm Karen Chase. The Polar Express is now on track to hit 25 states this week, bringing the coldest air in 16 years to most of the nation. The Northwest and Midwest from California to Phoenix are feeling it first starting today. Later this week, the cold wave will reach as far south as the Gulf Coast. A veteran train operator in New York is due to be questioned today about why his train was doing 82 miles an hour, then suddenly braked just before derailing. American students did not get good grades on a global exam in math, science, and reading. They scored below the international average on all three and cracked the top 20 only in one subject, reading. Students in Shanghai, Singapore, and Hong Kong got top ratings. Investigators have ruled out drag racing as a factor in the fatal car crash of Fast and Furious star Paul Walker. Co-star Vin Diesel was among those attending a vigil at the crash site. The mystery barges Google has been building off San Francisco, L.A., and New York are targeted to become floating retail stores to sell Google Glass, according to the San Francisco Chronicle. The big launch is next year. This is ABC News. Gastric Bypass No Surgery dot com. Gastric Bypass No Surgery dot com. We are Roca Labs, the sole inventor of the Gastric Bypass No Surgery. The formula replaces the expensive and dangerous surgery by creating a natural gastric bypass effect. Roca Labs is probably the strongest non-surgical weight loss solution in the world. Roca Labs has over 100,000 success videos on YouTube. Roca Labs Gastric Bypass No Surgery creates an immediate gastric bypass effect with no surgery. Your obesity can end with Gastric Bypass No Surgery dot com. Gastric Bypass No Surgery dot com. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Life jackets save lives. Wear it, Florida. Partly sunny skies today and pleasant this afternoon, the high 74 to 78. Partly cloudy tonight, lows ranging from 57 to 61. Tomorrow, more sun than clouds and warm with a high of 78 to 82. And on Thursday, mostly sunny and unseasonably warm, the high 80 to 84. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Don't ever miss a single edition of the Mike Huckabee Show. We're going to have a whole lot of fun talking the big issues of the day. We'll talk to the newsmakers and the issues that made them a newsmaker, as well as we'll bring you some entertainment, some fun. You never know what's going to happen.